Hi and welcome to the Studio Marco Primo. Today's video will be my first look at Magic Samplitude Pro X6. I've been using a Samplitude for a few years now after testing many DAWs when Cakewalk went out of business. I was a Sonar user for many years, and when I discovered Samplitude, at first it was a bit difficult to adapt, but when I got the workflow and all the features, I was seduced and the sound was good. So that's why after uh, X2, X3, X4, X5, I'm now uh, using X6. And I must be honest, Magix sent me a license to try it and make some videos about it. But of course, they did not pay me to say anything special. If I find something wrong or that could be better, I will say so. And so let's dive in with the new features. So usually the first thing I do when I do videos for YouTube is to set a separate output from Samplitude to be recorded by OBS and then I can lower the master volume of my monitors and not blast the microphone that I'm speaking in. So to do so, I will pull up the mixer and I will create an auxiliary bus uh, that will send a signal to a different software output. So this main bus receive all the tracks right now and it is redirected to the stereo master and the stereo master goes to the main monitor's output so if on the main i click on the aux those are existing one and when i hit one that does not exist it will create it and i can name it phones which represent in Total Mix FX the software output phones right here that will be redirected to OBS. All right, so if I hit play right now, I already receive an alert that says that there's a possibility of feedback. Those alerts I never saw in the previous versions. If I hit OK, then it works, it's, it, it's playing normally, and there's some levels going out of the master channel. I'm going to play again. But if I want to redirect this auxiliary bus to another output, like phones, like this, if I hit play, there's no signal going in the output anymore. What I found out is that you need to activate the monitoring and choose one of those hybrid engine. Once it's done, go back to the mixer and you still see the output going to uh, the separate outputs. And that way we can have multiple outputs. So I don't know why it is not working anymore uh, with the no audio monitoring peak meters only. That is what I was uh, using before. And the other ones too, it's not working. But at least I found a way to work anyway. One of the new features is the addition of the dynamic EQ. Let's try it. So let's check the dynamic EQ. We're going to solo the uh, vocal track and load it. Plugin browser. Um, some of the new plugins from uh, Magix are uh, located in the Vander Audio Plugin Union. So this is where you can find all the color FX and the core FX, FX. And you can find the dynamic EQ here. The first thing I see is that you can't resize it. We're going to try Carry it. Me home. So good night. 
Yeah, good night. A good night train is gonna carry me home. So good night. Yeah, good night. A good night train is gonna carry me home. So good night. Yeah, good night. Good night train is gonna carry me home. Good night train is gonna carry me home. Good night train is gonna carry me home. Carry me home. So good night. Yeah, good night. Good night train is gonna carry me home. So good night. Yeah, good night. A good night train is gonna carry me home. So good night. Yeah, good night. A good night train is gonna carry me home. Good Let's try a preset. Carry me home. So good night. Yeah, good night. A good night train is gonna carry me home. So good night. Yeah, good night. A good night train is gonna carry me home. So good night. Yeah, good night. A good night train is gonna carry me home. Good night train. All right, what about uh, on the drums, maybe? bad. Another new feature is the Dockable Track Editor. Let's check it. Another feature is the Dockable Track Editor. So you can take this one, take this, and move it somewhere else. So maybe at the bottom. Same features, but laid out differently. Plugin, aux, and etc. And of course, you can put it on top or at your right instead of the left. Like this. That's it. This next new feature is the track output recording. Very interesting. Let's test it right now. Next feature is the track output recording. So if I aim this track, which is a submix bus, and I hit record, it does not uh, record anything. But now what they've added is in the audio section, the input you can go at to tracks and choose the track in question it record and there you go then we have the preset search function in the plugin browser don't know what it is let's try it all right, another new feature is the preset search function in the plugin browser. So let's uh, try it on the electric guitar, plugin browser. Let's say I'm looking for an ambience reverb. So we have the room simulator. There's a lot of it's with that name. So let's see, we are on an electric guitar. Let's choose 
a soft ambience like this. And if we hit play, After that, Magic added the central automation control with automation panel. Whoa, that's something. Let's try it out. The next new feature is the central automation control with automation panel. So let's view it. Um, automation panel. Of course, you can detach it as you wish. I'm going to leave it there. Let's show a part of the mixer. Like this. So what it does is you can select touch on all the tracks at once. Or you could decide to only affect the selected tracks. Like this. So latch. Oh. It seems that even if I choose select tracks here, if I uh, change the mode, the right mode, it changed all the tracks. So this might be due to a manual right uh, action that I don't know of. I will have to explore this further. And if you have an idea how it works, please write it down in the comments. The next new feature is editing during playback. That's a big addition. I will try it out right now. If you don't have the option, the icon, you can add it. Just edit the toolbar and drag it where you want. Like this. And if we activate it and we play back. And that's it. The next new feature is precise and simple aux level control. Actually, what it is, if you pull up the mixer, it is a send on fader option. So if you want to choose an aux, let's say the reverb, you go there, select your aux, which is right here. And now every fader is the aux send level. You see? You see on top it is moving. So if you have a controller, it's very really easy to change the send level of that aux. And after that, you can change for another aux, the drum reverb, let's, let's say. And okay, I don't like this. And maybe more there, more there. So that is sans on faders. Most of people using digital mixer uh, are used to this function. So it's a nice addition. This last uh, new feature says high quality resampling engine. Uh, I guess I won't be able to test that today, maybe in a future video. Um, resampling is when the software reads the data many times before rendering some audio that you can hear. Maybe it will affect uh, those plugins that are emulations of old hardware units. I don't know. Uh, say if in the comments if you are interested to uh, hear more about that. Other things that Magix added is the Core FX Volume Former. Uh, I already tested that in a video about the Core FX Suite. Click in the link above if you want to see about it. Then Isotop Ozone 9 Elements. So that's the short version of Ozone. Great tools for mastering and uh, some great plugins in there too. 
uh, Ceremony Melodyne 5 Essential. Melodyne is included in uh, Samplitude for a few versions already. This will be the last version available. Great. And one great thing that wasn't working in X4 and X5 is the audio remote application. So you can start the record, play or stop uh, remotely from my drum set. It's very handy. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click on the like button, consider subscribing, hit the bell to get notifications, put questions and comments and suggestions for future videos in the comments, and of course, share my videos. It's always a great help.